Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and to officially our first Hacksmith video. Thanks for following the white rabbit here. In this video, I'm going to show you how to install a custom library, a custom NPM library in AppSmith. And this method is going to work for any library you can think of. But this way of doing things is a hack. I just want to make sure that that's clear. So you should also have in mind that this method is only going to work for self-hosted instances. And the reason is because we're going to be making changes to the platform code. So we would need to rebuild a Docker image with all of the changes we've made so that we can have access to that feature in our own installation. So these changes we are making here is not going to be available on AppSmith Cloud. It's just going to be for your self-hosted installation. This is a hack, don't try this at home. But maybe you could try it in the office, who knows? <laughs> so you might want to keep watching this video for a couple of reasons. One, if you don't want to wait for the official release, this is one way you can install custom libraries into AppSmith right now. So you can go ahead, make these changes and you have custom a custom library in your AppSmith um, installation. Um, another reason why you would want to keep watching this video is if you would love to know how the AppSmith platform works under the hood, especially libraries, because we are going to go into the code, make changes, and you have an idea of how things work on that hood. And lastly, you might want to keep watching this video if you just want to be awesome and have absolute bragging rights, which I think is really nice. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to install a custom library and we're going to be doing that with npm uh, then i'll show you how to import that library we've installed into the platform so that the platform knows about it and then we'll take a look at how to create type definitions for the library that has been installed so that we have autocomplete feature added in and uh, probably in another video i'm going to show you how to build a docker image with all of these new features we've added in so that you can have an image you can self-host and in that image you'd have all of these features we're working on um, available for your use so that's what we're going to be taking a look at in today's video if you do find value from our videos please get subscribed and let us know by leaving a like and um, telling us in the comment section your thoughts about our videos so don't forget to get subscribed guys before going deep and getting into any of this um, you do have to have a local setup of AppSmith we have a guide in the repo docs and we've also made a video guide here on how to set up AppSmith locally for development so go check either of them out to have uh, your setup done this is required to be able to continue in this video um, Something you should also have in mind is that um, all of the code changes we are making here in this video will be available on GitHub. So I'm going to share my screen and show you where you can go take a look at all of these code changes in cases where you'd love to see the changes we've made and copy them over. So for example, um, I have this in my GitHub repo. So this is going to be github.com forward slash cokogenun. And once you get here, don't forget to smash the follow button. Uh -huh. So let's go to the repositories tab and here in AppSmith, that's where you want to go check out. So there's going to be a branch called custom. Yeah, so there's going to be a branch called custom lib. And this is where all of the code changes that we'll be making today would live in. I'm going to have this linked in the description below so that you can go check it out and you'll be good to go. My name is Confident and I'm a developer advocate at AppSmith. Without any delay, let's get started. So the first thing I'm going to be showing you how to do is install a custom library. If you've ever worked with Node.js or JavaScript, this is going to be very familiar because it's going to be something you've done before. So for the sake of this video, I'll be showing you how to import Chance.js, which is the uh, random generator library into AppSmith. And uh, in fact, we can go take a look at that library right here. So I'm just going to open up the npm docs page for you to take a look at this. And it's a really awesome library because with this, you can generate it's random test data for your application and it's just awesome. It's like Faker, but the only difference is that it's active and it's getting almost a million weekly downloads, which is awesome. So we're going to be importing this library into AppSmith. So to go about doing this, what we need to do is open up AppSmith in our preferred text editor. I'm going to be using Vim. Um, then we want to make sure we do the installation. So I'm going to have about three windows open. So one, you need to have your terminal running. 
sorry, you actually need to have your text editor running and you need two terminal windows, one to do the installations and one to make sure we have the app smith server running. So here I'm in the app smith folder as you can see and uh, what I'm going to do is create a couple of other windows and the first thing I want to do here is make sure I have uh, my app smith server started. So I can do a yarn start. All right, uh, I'm not in the right folder, so I need to CD into the app, into the client folder. So this is going to be CD, uh, app, client, all right? And then I can do a yarn start, all right? And that should start my dev server. Awesome, so we have my dev server started and I can head back to the browser. And uh, if we go to take a look at what we have at dev.appsmith.com, you can see that we actually have access to a development environment and we can go make changes and see everything right here. So I'm just going to go and create a new app. So this is going to be an untitled application. So this is untitled app two. And here is my environment. So that's, uh, that's good to go. Now let's head back to the terminal and let's go over to open up a code editor. You can go ahead to use VS Code or whatever you prefer. I am going to be using Vim. So let's CD into our client and I'm just going to open Vim up here. And here we have uh, the folder opened. The first thing we want to do actually is install chance.js and we can do that using npm. So let's navigate to the second uh, terminal we have opened. Don't forget to CD into the app client folder. And here, let's go ahead to install chance. So this is going to be the regular yarn add command. So we're going to be um, adding chance so with the yarn add. And uh, here we should have that dependency installed. All right, that's good to go. Then the next thing we need to do um, is install the type devs um, as a dev dependency. So this is going to be uh, yarn add dash dash dev at types forward slash chance which is awesome. So let's give this some time to do its thing. All right, so let's go back to the browser to check things out. All right, so I'm just going to reload my browser here. And here we have the editor loaded up, but let's go ahead to check out what we have in the dependencies. And tada, we don't have chance showing up. So we actually have no change here because AppSmith as a platform does not know that we have chance installed. So we need to go tell it that we have chance installed to uh, have AppSmith know about chance. So in the next section, I'm going to show you how to import chance into the platform. So to get AppSmith to recognize our library and show it up in the editor, we need to let the platform know by mentioning a few magical words using code. And uh, don't forget to say please and thank you at the end, else AppSmith is going to get grumpy and not show up your library in the editor. <laughs> so let's uh, let's actually go in to make some changes and uh, we should have chance showing up in the editor. So let's head back to the um, your code editor. So this is going to be uh, in my first window here. And the first thing I want to do here is open up a file called dynamic binding utils. So let's go to open up that file. So this is going to be dynamic binding utils.ts. And uh, we have the file here. And if we go to the top of the file, you can actually see that we have other imports for the other libraries we have. Um, for example, this is the library import for DTFNS. So I can just go ahead to copy this and paste this below and uh, you can see this there. And uh, instead, I'm going to make changes to this so that we're actually importing chance. So let's uh, go to delete this and we want to do uh, chance, all right. So this is going to be chance, all right. Now that looks good. Uh, the next thing we want to do is, um, we want to also make an entry for chance in an array called extra libraries. So I'm just going to find that. So this is going to be const extra libraries. I think that's it. So we have that array right here on line 159. And I'm just going to open off all of these region folds. So if you take a look at what we have in the extra libraries array, you can see that this is an array that describes all of the libraries that are shown in the editor. This is an entry for Lodash, as you can see. This is an entry for Moment. This is an entry for XML parser. This is an entry for Forge. And lastly, we have the one for DataFender. So we just need to create an entry like this for Chance and we'll have it train up in the editor. So what I'm going to do is create one for Chance right here. All right, uh, so that looks good. 
and let's make sure we fix the indentation and I can go ahead to save this and it's going to restart the dev server with all of the changes we've made here and we should be able to access chance in the editor. Now you notice what I'm doing here on line um, 199 is that I'm doing a new keyword. So I'm instantiating an object of chance and passing it into the editor. The reason I'm doing this here is that if we don't do it this way, um, it means each time we need to use chance in the editor, we have to new up an instance of chance, save it in a variable, and then we can use chance by um, accessing that variable. So this way we can just access chance directly without having to do a new keyword every time. So that looks good. So I'm just going to go to the um, browser here and we should have everything reloaded. So I'm just going to reload it manually to be sure. And if we take a look at what we have in dependencies, you can see that we have chance.js added here. And of course, the version number and the doc URL with three passed in here are rendered right here within the editor. So this is awesome and we can actually test this out. So I'm going to click on build with drag and drop and let's go grab a text widget and we can paste this right here. And let's try to access what we have in chance name. That's going to be a function. And you can see that a random name has been generated, which shows that a library actually works. So um, I can delete this out, for example, paste this in again, and you can see a random name, which is different from the last, was also generated. So chance actually works, and this is awesome. But something you notice here is that we actually don't have autocomplete for chance, and it means we have to type a lot to actually get what we want. So let's fix that in the next section. To create type definitions for chance so that we get autocomplete, we're going to be using a package called 10. I'm going to open this up right here in the browser so that you see that package. So 10 is a code analysis engine for JavaScript that is used in editors. We are going to be specifically using this for autocomplete and we just need to use this to generate the type devs and then we'll have autocomplete in AppSmith. So let's, uh, let's do this. Um, what we need to do is use 10. 10 is actually already installed in AppSmith. So we just have to access the binary, generate the type devs and we'll be good to go. So let's head back to the terminal and here I'll actually be opening up um, a different terminal window, which is the one where we installed um, YAN. So I'm going to clear the screen. And here what we want to do is um, use turn from the node models. Um, so I'm just going to delete everything I have here because I have actually typed this out before. So I'm just going to show you what you need to do. So we want to ac access the binary from node models, turn, bin, and condense. I want to create a type def called chance. And then we also want to pass an entry point for the bundle we want to create type devs for, which in this case is going to be chance.js. So this already lives in node models, chance, dist, and chance min.js. So that's exactly what we need to do. And if I go run this, you can see that we actually have a lot of stuff uh, being outputted here. So uh, let's take a look at some of this. So if we scroll up, you can see that these are all type dev stuff for function names and everything that AppSmith needs for autocomplete. You can see all of that stuff right here. So that looks good. Uh, but what we want to do really is we want to save this in a folder for type definition so that AppSmith can load that folder and be able to read all of this stuff we are seeing right here from the terminal. So we are going to run that command one more time but in this case, we are going to save this in a folder. In fact, I should, I should clear my screen so that you're able to see this properly. All right, so this is going to be node models and we can go up to save this in a file. So we want to save it in a file called chance.json and this is going to live in a folder in source, constants, devs, and then the file name, which is chance.json. So I can go run this and all of that stuff you saw in the terminal is going to be saved in the file. And if we do an ls of what is in src constant uh, devs, you can see that we have a file now called chance.json, which is in the same folder as all of the other libraries we have on, our, on AppSmith. So this is the type dev for moment. This is one for Lodash. This is one for DataFNS, and you also have one for Forge. So that looks good. Um, now we need to go ahead to load this type dev in the turn server file. So what we need to do is head over to the editor, all right, and we want to open a file called turn server. All right, 
And here, um, right at the top, we want to import the file we just created for um, chance. So we have this one for DTFNS. I'm just going to copy this and paste it. And here, I want to do a replace of dates, FNS with chance. All right, and this is going to be global replace. So we actually have that uh, done now. And uh, now, here in this array for devs, as you can see here, I'm just going to put in chance here. So this is going to be chance. All right, and we have registered uh, the type devs for chance in AppSmith and we're good to go. So this looks good. And what I'm going to do is go ahead to save this and that should cause a rebuild and restart my server. And I can head back to the editor here in AppSmith and here it's re already reloading. So what I'm going to do here is go to the test text widget here and let's try accessing chance. So you can see now we have autocomplete for chance and I can do a dot name, for example, and you can see we have suggestions here showing that the autocomplete actually works. And then we have a name showing up. So we've been able to install chance and we have been able to create autocomplete for chance, which is just awesome. Now that we have this done, let's take this for a spin. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to go ahead to delete this text widget and I'm going to create a JavaScript file that generates um, a random list of user data and we can have that displayed in the table widget. So let's go create a JS file, all right? And I'm going to call this utils. That looks good. I'm going to call this function gen data and we want to create an array of variable length. So let's say return. So this is going to be array dot from, all right? And this is going to be array. Uh, so let's say, let's create an array of length of five. We can do dot keys here. And if we go run this, we should have an array of that length coming back. So you can see that we have an array that has five items in it. And that's because we are telling it, create an array of five items. Well, we can actually make this dynamic by using chance. So this is going to be chance dot integer. All right, and this takes in an object that can have a mean value. So we can say 20 and a max of uh, 50, for example. And if we go run this, you can see that we have an array of variable length. You can see we have uh, 31 items in this array. So let's loop over this data and let's actually create random user data. So I'm going to do a map here. And for each item in this array, what we want to do is return an object that has a name. And this is going to come from chance.name. All right, so that's name. Uh, then we want to do other things like phone number. So let's say phone. And this is going to come from chance.phone. All right, that looks good. Let's do email. So chance.email looks good. And let's do gender. So this is going to be gender and chance.gender. All right, so that looks good. Uh, let's go ahead to run this. And you can see that we have random user data being returned. I'm not sure why the gender is not being returned. So let's hit this one more time. All right, so I just added a trailing comma and we have the gender coming back now. So this is good. We have actual data coming back and we can go take a look at this and display this in a table widget. So let's grab a table. All right. And here for the data, this is going to come from utils.gendata. All right, and we actually have that data being displayed in this table, which is awesome. So um, you can see that we have a table here and this data is generated on the fly. So I can go reload the browser, for example, and the entire data set is going to be regenerated and rendered in the table using chance. So let's give this a spin. And you can see that that's exactly what happened here. That's because we've created a custom library and we have it imported and we're making use of it right here in AppSmith. So this is awesome. This gives you a glimpse into what you'll be able to achieve on AppSmith once we have the official custom library function rolled out. So if you love to see more hacks, we made a video here on how to use a custom image as the background image of a container widget. So go check out that video right here. And you should also check out this video we made right here on building a web scraper 
with AppSmith using Phantom JS Cloud. It's an awesome video, so go check both of them out. All right, so that's all for today's video. Don't forget to get subscribed, and I'm going to see you in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.